This is the first of several videos I'll be making to show how I made, or at this point will be making, each of the items in building a library book nook. Today's item is a globe. In a world, a tiny miniature world that exists only in her imagination. Hi y'all, I'm Minnie Maker Sal's imaginary friend and video narrator, Tippy Cal. Sal will be showing what did and did not work in making this 112 scale globe. The sphere is one and a half inches in diameter. That would be 18 inches in real life. So here we go. To make a globe, Sal purchased one and a half inch birch wood balls. She then checked that her paper guide for the semi-meridian was the right size. A semi-meridian is the C-shaped piece that circles about half around a globe. Yep, right size. Instead of using that paper guide, Sal used her plastic circle template to draw the meridian on a piece of 1 16th inch basswood. Notice she also marked the cross lines. Then, using her exacto knife, she started the first of many passes to cut out the meridian. Well, that didn't turn out. If that chip didn't occur, maybe sanding would have been enough. So, on to meridian try number two. Using one of her rotary tools, Sal drilled teeny holes along the cut lines. That first bit of drilling holes taught Sal another lesson. Make sure you don't drill too deep or you may drill into your cutting mat and break the super fine drill bit. So, she put a thicker foam piece under the wood and drilled the rest of the holes. So she could build up all parts of the meridian to then sand it more evenly, Sal used spackling compound mixed with a bit of Mod Podge. As she often does, in the middle of the night she had an inspiration. She recalled she had a few sheets of styrene in her craft room. The next morning, Sal eagerly drew the guidelines on a small piece of the styrene, which is a bit thinner than a sixteenth of an inch. Very carefully, she cut along the guidelines slowly and lightly. She did three passes with her knife, then snapped the meridian out. Unfortunately, the video of that process didn't work out. Sal then sanded the rough edges of the fourth meridian. That's the one to the left of number three. Not perfect, but far cleaner than her previous attempts. Using a 6 inch long 16 inch drill bit, she drilled a hole through the wood ball as close to center as she could figure. This shows the last bit of drilling as about every quarter inch she had to clear the sawdust from the threads. Note also the piece of tape Sal used to mark 1 and 3 quarters inch on the drill bit so she knew when the bit had passed completely through the ball. Sal first coated the wood ball with blue acrylic paint. Paint dried, Sal sketched in a rough approximation of the continents. By the way, she later painted the water a lighter blue. This shows the 16th inch steel dowel that goes through the globe, along with the beads and an earring back she used at the poles of the globe. And here are the close-ups of the poles after she glued the beads and earring backs in place and squeeze the styrene meridian in place using the earring backs as you'll see next. Sal attached the meridian to the earring back as shown by the red line on the image on the right. Using JB Weld steel stick, Sal mixed the two parts of the putty together then rolled two teeny bulbs. She put this on top of the ends of the hardware and post to hold it firmly together. Obviously, she did most of that out of the view of the camera. For the base of the globe, Sal used a heavy metal cabinet knob. She glued a tiny cork to the top of that and glued on a bit of ball chain for some bling. Using her razor saw, Sal cut out a thin slice in the cork to insert the meridian and attach the globe to the base. To reinforce where any pieces met another, Sal brushed on a tiny bit of Mod Podge at the joints, then coated all of the surfaces to give it a bit of shine. 
And here it is, all done. Sal didn't get the globe centered above the base, but it stands up firmly. So you can visualize this three and three eighths inch tall globe and base. Here it is in Sal's hand, all ready to go in her library book nook as soon as she builds that. And here's the globe with a little bit of spinning it can do. The next thing Minnie Maker Sal is going to make is an antique style lawyer's bookcase similar to this full sized one. That'll hold the many books she has yet to make for her library book nook. Well, Tippy caught you up, so thanks for viewing this. I hope the right things and the wrong things I did making the globe help you or at least provided a few minutes entertainment. Please like and subscribe and be sure to leave me a comment.